Howdy, Possum Patty here. And Yepers, I had every intention of sitting down and journaling about that meteor. You know, I'm all excited about that. And I left my dirt road diary sitting on the table so I would have the crumbs ready to go. While I sat down, I got out the dirt road diary and I was thinking, I want to put the earthquake in here too. Now, do you remember that earthquake? <laughs> we had this little tiny baby East Coast earthquake back in April. <laughs> I made a funny reenactment video. Yeah. <laughs> Yes, that was a lot of fun. Anyway, yeah, they joke about our earthquakes here because, well, it's been a really long time before we've had a big one. So we just get minor ones right now. Anyway, I, was, I started pulling out things to journal about the earthquake. And I was like, well, I guess that's what I'm doing today. I'll do the earthquake and then I'll do the meteor. <laughs> yes, so that's what I'm doing. Come on along. Well, I've got a bunch of things all scattered about here. Let me explain to you my thought process. I know that's a little scary, but we'll go slow. <laughs> my first thought was I absolutely positively had to have a black background. And I don't know why, but it's working because you'll see as soon as I show you everything else I pulled out. And then I was like, oh, looking through my computer and I found this earthquake cartoon that I had saved in a folder, apparently to put on this page, but forgot about it. Earthquakes here on the East Coast, impossible. They can't happen here. They've never happened here. <laughs> and the little couple's going down the highway and you can see the road cut in the background. New York in one direction, Boston in the other direction. And right through, right through the road cut, right there is a major fault. That's a line where the earthquake happens. And you can tell it was an earthquake because the layers have shifted. Like this layer would match up with that one and that layer would match up with that one. So this whole bit of earth has slipped down or been pushed up <laughs> however you want to look at it yes so east coast definitely major earthquakes here quite a while ago not in recent history though i thought okay i'm gonna make a pocket for that and i want to journal about the earthquake so i need a journaling card right so I cut a piece of cardstock that would fit in there. And I'm like, well, what can I put on there as a decoration? And I'm like thinking, should I put a picture of, I don't know, just an outdoor scene, some rocks? I wasn't really sure what I was going to do. And then I was like, oh, the book. <laughs> Let me show you the book. Lost in the Annals. History and Legends of the New Madrid Earthquake of 1811 to 1812 by Merle Rhine Mueller. This is my great auntie Merle. She wrote the book about the biggest earthquake probably in this country, not counting the whole Yellowstone volcano thing, right? <laughs> Yes, she wrote the whole book about earthquakes. And I was like, hmm, I really need to read this again. Yes, I read it a long time ago. When was this even published? 1990, 1990, 30-something years ago. And I was like, well, I can take a page from the story 
Now, the New Madrid earthquake, no, this isn't Spain. This is the Mississippi River. Yes, this is out west in this country. I know it's called New Madrid, but it's not, you know, it's in this country out by the Mississippi, western Tennessee, part of Missouri, I think Arkansas, in that whole area. There was an earthquake so strong that it actually shifted the course of the Mississippi River. Yes, and it talks all about it in this book. <laughs> yes. Okay. Um, so I said, well, I'll just take the first page there, chapter one, and I'll copy that and use that as a backing on my card. So I did. And then I just added on there the title of the book and that it was by my great auntie Merle. Now this is granddad's sister. So granddad is my father's father, right? We call them granddad. And this is his sister Merle. And okay, so I got to glue the black paper down. I got to make the pocket. How you see everything is like black and white. We're going with the black and white theme here. And then I was going to put a picture. So I was going to use a picture from the um, from that little video I made, right? And I did a split picture of the chairs before the earthquake and then one chair falling over after the earthquake. And I thought that would be a funny picture to put on there. But then I was like, mm, I, I think I want a frame. I got to find a little scrap of paper to put a little frame because this is just like solid white. And I was like, I got to put something on there, right? So I went through my little scrap box over there and I found this gel plate print. And I think I did these for October. I used a mask to do this tree and, and a big moon. And I was using black and silver. I was experimenting. Oh, I don't think this was last year, probably the year before. And this little scrap, look at that all black. See, that side didn't come out, but this is how I wanted it to look. You just keep experimenting until you get what you want, okay? Yeah, so I was like, oh, this is gray tones and black and white. Maybe I can just write right on there. I got to cut it down a little bit, fit it on there. And then I'm just going to put the picture right there like that. And I got my journaling. And basically, you know, that's it. That That's going to be the whole page for today. Oh, and then I'm like, you know, when I pulled the card out of the pocket, of course, you know, got this big black space up there. And I'm like, hmm. What can I put up there? <laughs> I know there had to be one more thing. I was just getting everything together and there's got to be one more thing. So I got out this extraordinary things to cut out and collage book. This was gifted to me and it's all these wonderful things to cut out. Look at that. Yes. <laughs> and use them in a collage or on a journal page and I took out some buildings and I was like, what if I took a couple of these tall buildings and just put them at different angles? <laughs> yeah, put them at different angles across the top of the page just for fun. You know, like there was a little earthquake going on. So that's my plan. Whoops. Ooh, where'd that come from? Hmm. That just fell out of something. It's a little mason jar. Look at that. I know. Lots of mason jar things going on here lately. Okay. Move that aside. I've got all my, my garden things out today, too, because I was working on that. But when I sat down, I decided to do this first. Okay. Garden tomorrow. So I think the first thing I'm going to do is move a couple things because I pulled everything out. <laughs> Sometimes it's fun to have everything out, and sometimes it's just like, well, that's a clutter all over the desk. Yeah. Grab some glue. You know, paper engineering. You got to think of step by step what you're going to do, what you're going to do. So I like to put glue stick in the middle. 
It always seems to get a little mushy when you get down towards the end. And because this is cardstock, I'm just going to put a little tacky glue in the corners to hold it down so that dries. What is this, July? July. <laughs> this happened in April. All right, so pocket, 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 pocket. I think I'm just going to put it in just the way it is. Oops. <laughs> oops, there's always oops. It's moving. Okay. Now, what should we do next? I think what I'm going to do is glue the journaling card things together. And then this can dry while I'm cutting out the buildings. Then I'll put the buildings on. And then when that's dry, I can put the journaling card in. And that's my plan. I felt bad when I made this funny little video because I did put in the description box that it was a total reenactment. <laughs> but some people thought it was the real deal. Yeah, and I had to... Um... <laughs> I had to say, oh, it's a reenactment, it's a reenactment, not the real thing. Oh, this has paint on it, it might be hard to rip, I'll try. Everybody was like, oh wow, good capture, wow, I can't believe you caught that on camera. <laughs> I'm like, no, I didn't catch it on camera. It's a reenactment. Aunt Merle wrote another book, too. She wrote a book about the county where she lived down in Arkansas. Like another history. She's also the aunt that wrote the family history, genealogy, my father said. But I don't know where that is. I don't know who would have it. I haven't been in touch with the Arkansas folk for a long time. I don't even know who's alive. I guess I can find out, right? Okay, now will the glue stick hold it down on top of that acrylic paint? Don't know. Maybe I'll add a touch of tacky glue. You've been around a long time. You're a long time awesome possum peep if you remember when I made these papers. April 5th, 2024. Earthquake 4.8 in Tewksbury Township, New Jersey. I think in England they'd say Tewksbury. <laughs> Um, baby possum was at work. They evacuated the building. My sister said her house shook and there was a loud noise. We were at an appointment. I was sitting in the truck, slow stitching actually, and I felt a bump and heard a small rumble like a truck was passing by. I remember looking up and thinking, hmm, it's already passed by because I didn't see it. And that was the earthquake. Okay, so, ta-da, easy peasy, pumpkin squeezy. Now, buildings, buildings, probably some of these small, taller ones. I wonder if I should have put them on before I put the pocket on. That's okay, that's okay. We'll work with it. Chapter 1. Convulsions in the Earth. 
a little past two o'clock in the morning of December 16, 1811, citizens of Boston were awakened by the sound of ringing church bells reverberating eerily on the frosty night air. Many of those hearing the bells must have sleepily wondered what caused the bells to chime at such an unseemly hour. It was the first vibration from a massive earthquake occurring over a thousand miles away to the southwest in the middle of the continent. The source was located in a little-known area outside the state's borders in the territories of central Mississippi Valley. Shocks from this historic earthquake were felt over a two million square mile area. Half the continent was jarred from the Gulf to Upper Canada to New England and down along the Atlantic seaboard. Shock waves even reached across the ocean to London. The center of the convulsion was concentrated in a triangular area from Cairo, Illinois, New Madrid, Missouri, Hickman, Kentucky, Ridgely, Tennessee, to the latitude of where Memphis would be located across the Mississippi into northeast Arkansas to Crowley's Ridge. The damage to the land in this area was beyond imagination and was made uninhabitable for over a hundred years. Those living 200 to 300 miles away, where damage was only light, knew something tremendous was happening. Thomas Jefferson, in his Monticello home in the Virginia mountains, heard the deep-throated rumble felt the quakes and made note of it in his journal. The earthquake struck in the darkness of night without warning. If there was any unusual conditions, such as ghostly lights in the sky or strange sounds from the earth that might have been interpreted as a warning sign of approaching catastrophe, they were not recalled by those in the midst of the fury. Weather on that date was recorded to have been unusually mild for mid-December. All right, I have my jumble of buildings here. I've got to get them glued down. When I was a kid, my father taught me the names of some of the buildings. And I used to know more than I know now. But uh, one of my fave buildings, of course, there's the Empire State Building. But one of my fave buildings was the Chrysler Building and the Flatiron Building, and then there was the Pan Am Building, the UN Building, um, other ones, I can't remember their names now. So let's see, I'm gonna use glue stick. And as long as they're tilting at angles, it should be okay. I want them to look all a tumble. Oh, that's a big one. I want that one popping out. Yeah, I could get around the city pretty good when I was a kid. <laughs> I knew how to take the subways. Mostly I walked. I knew the Waldorf Astoria. Central Park. I knew where the museums were. Macy's. Rockefeller Center. Chelsea Pier. Chinatown. Soho. I probably couldn't find my way around today. <laughs> First, we went up in the Empire State Building. We went to Statue of Liberty. My father used to take us on, <laughs> on the Staten Island Ferry because it was only a nickel. So I'm going to take you for a boat ride and we go on the Staten Island Ferry because it only costs a nickel. 
And back then, like the Museum of Natural History was like donations only. Yeah, you could walk right in and see everything. And it didn't cost anything. And then as you were walking out the door, the front door there, there was a big jar. <laughs> People put money in the big jar. <laughs> if you like what you saw, you put a dollar in the jar. Yeah, no, it's not like that anymore. <laughs> Cost you a lot of money to get in there. Although they still call it a donation. Okay, do my buildings look tilted? Yes, they do. Okay. <laughs> well, since I got glue all over everything, I'm going to have to let them dry a little bit before I put my journaling card in there. Just waiting for some of that glue to dry. I thought I'd flip through things to cut out. See if there was a meteor in here. I found a page with astronauts and planets and the moon. I don't see a meteor though. There's only one page of space, I think. I got buses, modes of transportation. Yeah, well, I'm going to do a watercolor meteor, yeah, because it is World Watercolor Month anyway. <laughs> and I thought I would have fun with some watercolors. Yeah, so nothing in here that I could use for that. Well, I made a mess here. I need to straighten up a little bit and make some room for watercoloring. So I'll probably come back and do that tomorrow. Meanwhile, I think I'm pretty dry here. And all I have to do is pop my journal card in here. Now, this is not about a rock, unless you count the earth as one big rock, third rock from the sun, right? <laughs> yes. <laughs> That's lots of geology going on here, yes. Oh, I love that I remembered Auntie Merle's book. Yeah, I gotta leave this out. I really need to read this again. <laughs> it's been so long. Oh, especially when she goes to visit the area, like where the lake is, where the earthquake had opened up the land and the land went down. And oh, I'll read that to you another day. <laughs> well, thanks for coming along today and allowing me to share my journaling with you and my earthquake stories and Auntie's book. Do come back for the meteor story, though. <laughs> we do have a family meteorite. Mm -hmm. Yes, we do. <laughs> Thanks for coming along today. Happy junk journaling. Bye-bye.